Okay, we are live. Hopefully you guys are doing your work because, again, I can't emphasize enough that if you don't do the math, you don't do your geometry, then you can't pass on to the next class. So it's not hard. You just have to do the work. I show the answers every day. Um, so I have a review today and then tomorrow I have a test. Okay, so the test isn't bad because I will set you up and help you with the test. Um, as far as a retake, I'll let you know what you did wrong and you can fix your test so everybody still can get an A. I'm not going to make it difficult at all. So here's the review. So if you need a picture of this, I can send it to you, but I'm going to set you up and do some of these or start some of these for you so you guys understand. So number one, I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to break up the square roots. I'm going to go square root of 25, square root of 2 because 25 is a perfect square square root of m to the fourth and square root of m. The reason I do that is because I can take half of that and then I'll let you finish up the answer. Five m squared and these two stay squared to two m, okay? Um, number two, what I noticed about number two is right off the bat on the bottom part of this number two, that is a perfect square root. That's just three x to the third. And then I'll break up the top just like it did number one. And I'll let you finish it, but I'll go probably square root of four square root of 5 because that's a perfect square y to the fourth and y and then I'll probably do 2 y to the second and then inside the square I'll have a 5y okay um, number three you can't add them unless you make them the same so I'll make the 20 into a square root of 4 square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 5 4 and 5 because there is a square root of 4 so I'll get negative 4 times square root of 4 is 2 square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 5, negative 8. And you can then add them. I'll let you finish that, okay? Number 4. Oh, I might need another piece of paper to do number 4, but I'll just slide that over here. Here's number 4. Um, I've got 5 square root of 5 times a 3 square root of 5 plus a 3 times... Oh, wait a minute. Square root of 25 is not just plain old 5, so I'll just change that to a 5, which will make that a 15, right? And then I'll have a 5 square root of 5 times a 3 square root of 5 plus 15. And then I'm distributing. I'm going to go this times this, this times this. Um, and I'll let you finish that up. You will get a square root of 25. Um, you'll get a 75 square root of 5. And I'll let you finish that up, okay? Um, number 5, graph the quadratic to solve the equation. Okay, so now, why not you just use Desmos to do a lot of this? I think this can be an easy test if you just use decimals. So number five, I've got a y equals x squared minus 2x minus 24. So I've got my graphics calculator, but you can also use decimals. And if you haven't downloaded decimals yet, um, here we go. So if you have not loaded up decimals, decimals is an app that you can get. Um, it's right there. If I load it up, and I've got my contrast changed thanks to rally he showed me how to do this so we can all see it so if i go y equals so much of this test can be done just by graph and stuff honestly um x squared minus 2x and then minus 24 okay so now i'm probably gonna have to automatically right off the bat i see that it has intercepts at negative four and six, so it says solve. So do know that the zeros, x equals negative four, and x equals six. And I got that just from the graph. See the zeros there and there. If I zoom out a little bit, there's my vertex. And you can tap on it too. That's what I love about the vertex. You can just tap on it. There it is, vertex at one, negative 25. The y-intercept is there. So you gotta just use the calculator to get the answers for, okay? Um, six. Six is solved by square roots. Okay, I think I can probably maybe fit that on the paper here. Uh, plus seven, plus seven. I get a two x squared equals eight. Divide by two, x squared equals four. I'm going to square root, square root. And I remember there's two answers. So how about a plus or minus two? Seven. Um, I'm going to go plus one, plus one, so I get x minus four squared equals nine. Now when I square root, I'm going to get two answers. I'm going to get a x minus four equals a three and plus or minus three. 
when x minus 4 equals a negative 3, okay? All right, now, number 8, solve by completing the square. All right, I'm going to go ahead and you guys need to finish this. Number 8, I'll just do on a super sheet of paper. So number 8 was x squared plus 16x equals 17. Okay, now, completing the square, you ready? Here's how it worked. We took half, half of 16. Half of 16 is 8, and we squared it. So we took half of 16, and we squared it. Half of 16 was 8, 8 squared is 64, so we add 64, and we add 64 to both sides. I don't know if you guys remember doing that, but hopefully you do. It factors, and it factors into a x, half of 16 is 4, Oh, gosh darn it. Half 16, 4, 4 squared is 16. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So half, no, 8, half of 8, 64. I'm right. So it's going to be a plus 8, x plus 8 equals, I don't know what, 17 plus 64. I'm not sure what that is. 17 plus 64, 81. Oh, I like those numbers. So that same thing as an x plus 8, quantity squared equals 81. And then... You just need to solve it, finish it up, solve it like we did this one here, okay? You can do that, okay? Solve it just like we did this one, okay? Um, nine, solve by factoring, okay? Nine, solve by factoring many equations. I can factor x plus six, x minus six, right? And then get two answers, six and negative six. 10, bring over the 48. x squared minus two x minus 48 equals zero. I'm going to factor and get many equations, so I'm going to get a x and an x. Um, probably 6 and 8, negative 8, positive 6, and I'll let you finish that up. 11, um, we're going to go ahead and probably 3x, x, moles 1, or probably plus 1, plus 1, and then you get the many equations and you solve it. Um, 12, I'm going to bring over the 12 first, so I'm going to have a 20x squared minus a 1x minus a 12 equals 0 factor. Hmm, probably 4 and 5. I might need my pencil here just in case I make a mistake and need to erase. Probably 4x, probably 5x, probably 3 and 4. Let's see here. That's a 15. And that, oh, there you go. 15 and 16. There you go. I need a negative 1, so about a negative 16 positive 1. You can do the mini equations. Now, 13, 14, we did not do that. Um, they took it off the state test, so there's no reason we need to learn about imaginary numbers until you are in Algebra 2. So we don't have to do that, okay? Perusing along, okay? Um, 15, solve this inequality and graph the solution on number line. Okay, so what I'll do is bring over the 30, and I'll have an x squared minus a 1x minus a 30. We'll set it equal to 0 for our border points. Factor, 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 x, x. Probably negative 6, positive 5, which means on my number line, we're going to have a negative 5 as a border point and a 6 as a border point. Um, because there's no equal sign, these are going to be open circles. It's greater than, and we can test a point, but it is going to shade in that way and that way. And you can test a point if plugged in zero. Zero will not work. Try it that point. Try zero, okay? You should try it. Zero squared minus zero greater than 30. It won't work, okay? Um, 16. Two ways to solve. One is to graph it. Again, there's nothing wrong. I'm okay with you guys using decimals to solve these. Um, you can also do it algebraically. If I set them equal, I'd have negative x. Minus 2 equals x squared minus 4. Bring everything over. 0 equals x squared plus x minus 2. Um, plus 2 minus 1. Those will give me my x values of negative 2 something and 1 something. Now that's one way to do it. The other way, the easy way, is probably by decimals. I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can do it on decimals. Okay. So let's see how we can do it on decimals. Okay. So clear that. Get rid of that won't be hard. I have faith in you. x squared. Subtract 4. Boom. There's that one. Okay. Enter. Second equation. Um, y equals um, negative x. Subtract 2. Okay. There it is. Now, you can kind of see where they... Let me go ahead and zoom this in. Check it out. You want to see how easy this is? If you use Desmos. 
tap on it. There's the point. Negative two zero. Negative two zero. Tap on it. There it is. One negative three. Okay, Desmos is pretty easy. Okay, seventeen. Okay, clear these off. Okay, back, back. So if I do a y is, well, we'll make it equal. I will go six minus x squared. Okay, looks like that. And then zoom it out. And we know that if it's greater than I shade above, so I'm going to shade everything above the curve. So I'm going to shade, make it nice and dark. I'm going to use my pen. I'm going to make it look nice and dark. Okay, 18. So it looks something like this. Okay, you guys can do this. Okay, this is your homework. You can do this. Six. Okay, shade above. Above the curve. Okay. 18. Let's do it together. Okay. 18, do it again. Okay, here we go. Back up. Y equals. And you're going to just use decimals. Um, 9 minus x squared. And I'll do a y equals. Oh, I didn't do this as shading. Whoa, I just saw something. Hold on. What if we did shade? All right, let's shade both of them. Y is less than or equal to 9 minus x squared. You guys are probably say, Mr. Davies, it's right there. I should have listened to you, huh? And then y is, is this going to work? Greater than or equal to. Oh, yeah, look at that. Got to back that one up, too. It does. Y is... Look at that. Cool. You guys don't have to do anything. Just type in numbers. Plus 5x. Subtract 6. There you go. See where they overlap? That's where you want to shade, okay? Um. Okay, now, 19 solved by the quadratic equation you're going to have to show your work. Okay, so let me go ahead and go through that real quickly. Um, so 19, you're going to have to show your work. You've got your 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. You're going to use negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, you can do that. Um, number 20, Last but not least, okay, the equation is h equals. So here it is. Ball is thrown in the air with an initial velocity of 48 feet per second. That's how hard you throw the ball. Um, the height of the ball can be modeled by h equals negative 16. That's gravity. t squared plus 48t. When does the ball reach its maximum height? That's going to be our negative b over 2a. What is that height? Plug that answer in. So you go uh, negative 48 over 2 times negative 16. So 48 divided by 32 I think is 1.5. I think it is 1.5. Hold on. Yeah, 1.5. So then you plug in 1.5 to get the height. So I'm going to go h of 1.5 equals, you know, your negative 16 times 1.5 squared plus 48 times 1.5. And you go from there. Figure out with that answer. And then c set equal to zero. It's 48t. Okay. And then solve. There's going to be two answers. One is when it's on the ground at zero, and the other is when it hits the ground. And then another way you can do that, again, you can even do that on Desmond. So I will let you guys work on this. Now, real quick, before I go, um, there's a question on the homework from last night. I want to make sure that I address that. Here was our homework last night. This is what I got for five, six, seven, eight. Um, nine, just set it greater than one. Divide, divide. So divided by 0 0.0185, I got 53. Then I square rooted it, and I got 7.3, which means if you're going greater than 7.3 miles per hour, you'll have a bigger than a one-foot skid. Okay. Um, 10, they both shade, shade, and you get this region in here. 11, they're both greater than, so they shade in this region. 12, 
you get the double shading in the region here. Try Desmos on these. Uh, 13 I solved and I took the square root, so I've got a 2.5 and a negative 2.5. Um, greater than 2.5, less than negative 2.5. 14, I had to use my quadratic equation, but you can also, now that you know that you can use Desmos, let me show you another way to do some of these, okay? Real quick, why not? So, can you do these without using the quadratic formula? Yeah, you can. Actually, if we graph them, you should be able to get the, for instance, if I have y equals a, I'll just show you another way to get these, y equals an x squared, I don't want that. On x squared, subtract 15x plus 34, whoops, 15x plus 34. Okay, how do I get these answers? Well, one way you can get them is right here. They are the zeros. So if I tap on there, there's my answer, 2.78. Okay, tap on this, where's the other answer? There it is, 12.27. So that's another way so you can avoid the quadratic formula. Um, same thing on this one. You can graph it and get the zeros. On 16, the way that one works is you're going to make it greater than um, or equal to 150,000. Um, I solved it, use the quadratic formula, or you can use your calculator and get the zeros. Um, and it's kind of like this. You can, if you want to make a profit, you got to sell some hot dogs, right? But if you make too many hot dogs, then you're going to waste. So anywhere between 1,349 hot dogs and 5,650 hot dogs would be where you'd want it to go in order to make that much profit, okay? Um, if you make more than that, you lose money because you're wasting food. And if you make less than that, you haven't made enough food to make any money, okay? So anyway, that's that. What I want for homework is I want you to do the review. And I've done most of it for you, but I want you to do it on your own. Take a picture of it show it to me and then tomorrow we'll talk about the test okay because the test is going to be low key here's the review page one here's review page two if you want me to send you a picture please let me know i can okay all right that's all i got good luck and i'll talk to you later